Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back WSWA president and CEO, Craig Wolf. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> I can see everybody. It's actually pretty easy to see. Uh, as you know, this is WSWA's 74th annual convention and exposition, which just coincidentally coincides with the 74th anniversary of the association itself. Next year, we look forward to celebrating our diamond anniversary, our 75th anniversary. Now, when WSWA was founded in 1943, it was in the middle of the Second World War. Now, I'm certainly not implying that the world is in worse shape than it was in 1943, though I'm sure you wouldn't have trouble finding some people who feel that way today. But I do think it's safe to say that the middle tier is facing greater challenges today than we've ever faced before. To name just a few of the challenges. At the federal level, the need for revenue to pay for comprehensive tax reform threatens the last in, first out accounting system used by wholesalers for generations, as well as our 5011 tax credit that we worked so hard to win back in 2005. In the courts, big retailers are leading a new wave of litigation designed to break down prohibitions on interstate shipping of alcohol to consumers, challenge tied house prohibitions, and overturn license limitations, residency requirements, and long-standing pricing regulations. Amazon and other large retailers are looking to change the rules in order to buy and sell products outside of the three-tier system and dominate the marketplace to the detriment of independent retailers of beverage alcohol. Private labels blur the distinction between the tiers, as retailers often control production, allocation, and distribution of those products, and market those products in a way that raises questions of improper slotting and exclusion of other brands. Brew pubs, craft distilleries, small wineries, and now big brewers even, are seeking expanded retail sales privileges and self-distribution. Large distilled spirit suppliers, in the interest of equal treatment of beer, wine, and spirits, and a number of smaller craft distillers now are contemplating seeking direct-to-consumer sales of their products. And consumers are increasingly desire the convenience of online ordering and rapid home delivery and believe the tiered system of independent retailers, wholesalers, and suppliers and other important uh, regulatory controls are, are archaic and anachronistic. And they also believe that legitimate and time-tested regulations are impediments to the on-demand economy and need to be reconsidered. And then we have the challenges associated with the marijuana legalization movement, including the need to ensure the cannabis is properly taxed and regulated, and to defend a socially responsible beverage alcohol industry against proponents of legalization who use demonization of our products as a political tactic. Now this proliferation of challenges to the regulated system calls for a deep and thoughtful assessment of the direction and focus of WSWA. So it is fortuitous that the membership of WSWA is now engaged in our triennial, that's a real world triennial, every three years, uh, strategic planning process, which is designed to create a framework for the association to respond to the threats and challenges we are facing and will face in the coming years. Now, historically, candidly, I have not been a big fan of the traditional strategic planning process. I question the value of a three or five year strategic plan that often became obsolete before the ink was even dry, especially in the context of a rapidly changing environment where you don't know and can't predict where the next challenge will arise or what form it will take. So I placed greater emphasis on being nimble and adaptable, being able to rapidly identify new threats or opportunities, and then to marshal our energies and our resources to face, those, to face those threats or to take advantage of those opportunities. Now, ironically, my skepticism regarding long-range planning was reinforced by my military training, which places a tremendous amount of emphasis on operational and contingency planning. Now, every soldier knows the famous quote of the 19th century German Field Marshal Helmut von Mulkey. Now, they may not know who Helmut von Mulkey is. They may not you know, have heard his name before, but they know the quote. And that is that no battle plan ever survives contact with the enemy. And there's a widespread perception in the military that we are always trained to fight the last war, not the present one. On more than one occasion during a class 
outlining the 37 different processes that must take place in planning a military exercise or a military operation, I would raise my hand and ask the officers leading the, uh, the training, look, if operational planning works so well, how do you explain the outcomes in places like Vietnam and Iraq, right? I'm sure many of you have asked the same questions, right? But I later came to realize that my skepticism regarding strategic planning was based upon my assumption that since you can't predict the actions of your adversaries, since you don't necessarily know their goals and the tactics and strategy they will use to achieve those goals, the substantial effort put into planning would be a time-consuming but empty exercise. But as I look at the challenges we are facing today, having the benefit now of being an almost 18-year industry veteran, 21 years if you take into account the three years I spent working for my uncle's liquor store when I was growing up, I think it's obvious that we are not facing a disconnected series of disparate, often unpredictable attacks on the regulated system. This isn't just one segment or one tier seeking a minor exception to the system, all right? I think we can all agree that there is today a coordinated effort at almost every level to dismantle a regulatory structure that is without question the safest, most accountable, efficient, consumer-friendly, and profitable system for the distribution of beverage alcohol in the world today. Now we can put aside for a moment and for another day a discussion about whether the efforts being made to break down a regulatory structure that has proven so effective and created so much opportunity for so many suppliers, wholesalers, and retailers over the course of the past 84 years is in the best interest of those who are leading these efforts. That discussion would take way longer than I have today and you have today. What matters, though, is that armed with this knowledge, with a clear vision of the long-term goals of those who seek to disrupt and destroy the balanced system of distribution now in place, I believe we can and will actually make effective use of the strategic planning process to prepare for and to counter the challenges we are facing. And we will use our influence to capitalize on opportunities that almost always accompany such challenges and changes, like our alliance with Drizzly, that demonstrates our commitment to finding consumer-oriented but responsible distribution solutions in line with the new on-demand economy. Or like our successful effort to gain millions of dollars in additional funding for formula and label approval by the tax, Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, so that new products can now be brought to market in days instead of months or years. But what gives me even greater confidence in our ability to face these challenges is the fact that WSWA today has a stronger team of professionals and volunteer leaders than we have ever had before. The WSWA staff today is seasoned and effective. We have a combined total of 135 years of organizational experience. The WSWA team understands the industry. They understand the nature and challenges we face. And they are at the top of their game in their respective areas of expertise. Whether dealing with Congress, the new administration, the federal courts, working with governors, attorneys general, state legislators, and regulators, making sure our views are shared through the media or organizing great events like this convention and our Leadership Skills Conference, you are represented at WSWA by the best of the best. But even more significantly, the organization is blessed with a committed and savvy group of volunteer leaders from multiple generations that are representative of every type of American wholesaler. Large, medium, small, single state, regional, national, beer and wine, wine and spirits, control states, and licensed states. They bring together a wealth of experience, as well as a keen understanding of the new economy and the technological revolution that has fueled the evolution of the modern marketplace. Industry leaders like Carmen Martinetti, Steve Becker, Tom Cole, Stan Hastings, Andy Chrisis, Sid Ross, and Sue McCollum, alongside young, bright, innovative, and energetic next generation wholesalers like Doug Epstein, Chris Underwood, Danny Wirtz, Ryan Moses, and Cutter Smith. So while we are faced with significant and profound challenges in the years ahead, we do so with confidence. We have a clear understanding of those challenges. We have the right team in place to prevail in the face of those challenges and to take advantage of new opportunities that often arise in a rapidly changing environment.
And you can count on the WSWA team of staff and whole volunteer leaders to work tirelessly to secure a bright future for the vibrant, innovative, and balanced and focused marketplace that is the hallmark of the three-tier system of distribution. Thank you.